Hello, everyone. Welcome to Pearls of Wisdom with Dr. Jewel Diamond Taylor. I'm here to ask a burning question. And Dr. Jewel, the question I want to ask you is this. We already know that women seek you out for counseling and for coaching, but mm -hmm. is there a common reason why they seek you out? And, and before you answer, I want to bring, make sure everybody understands that is a Emmy in behind her. That's, that's perched behind Dr. Jewel yeah. Diamond Taylor. Yeah. So that means you've put in the work for many, many years in, in somewhere you've put in the work. You are an author. In a previous episode, you already told us the difference be between coaching and mm -hmm. consulting. Um, so is there a common reason why women seek you out? You definitely know your stuff. Um, one thing, Margot, uh, I believe that women find me relatable. I know that when I started in the 80s, I didn't see any women of color standing on a stage empowering. I didn't see women in the pulpit. I didn't see women at conferences. I didn't see, it was dominated by white males. And that was one thing that motivated me to pick up a podium, pick up a microphone, was because I said, I want to fill the void. And I think that women found me relatable. They found that I was transparent. They found that I was still doing the work, that I was growing right in front of them. I think women realized that I was very determined and focused to stay in my lane. I'm not trying to sell real estate. I'm not trying to be a billionaire. I'm not trying to sell quick fix answers. I think women, at the time that I started, women began to realize how important it was to have these conversations, to uh, see a woman growing before their eyes. And what I find that women are realizing they're walking around with a lot of luggage. I have, I got a lot of miles under my belt traveling all around the world. And whenever I travel, you have to pay an extra price if your baggage is too heavy, it sure. costs you. And I think that women were starting to realize that the reason they are humped over, the reason why they're sad, the reason why they're tired, the reason why they are angry, the reason why they are burned out is because they're carrying too much baggage. And I just thank the Lord for giving me some insight and some language to help women understand that you got to let some stuff go. It's killing you. And so what I find women are coming to me talking about the baggage that they've been carrying. They're, they're, they're carrying a lot of resentment. They're carrying a lot of deferred dreams, uh, they're carrying a lot of wounds. And I had no idea, Margo, when I first started that I would be moving in the lane of teaching women emotional and mental wellness. I had no idea because that's where I am now. It's not about just setting goals. It's about having letting women have access to someone who understands who does not judge them. And so what I'm what I'm finding is that women are dealing with feeling overwhelmed, not navigating relationships well, women that are lonely, women that are sick. And I'm helping them to connect the dots that their emotional health is connected to their physical health. So the women are coming to me and they're telling me the stories of not about not having money, they're not talking about that. They're talking about there's there's an emptiness. They're coming to me telling me I'm finally feeling brave enough to say mm. that there's some estrangement in my, in my family. I'm not talking to this person or this person's not talking to me or I've never dealt with, with the rape or I never dealt with the divorce. I never dealt with the betrayal. I never dealt with sibling rivalry. So what I'm finding is that women are coming to me with a lot of truth telling. They want to unburden themselves. They want to, they want a place to tell the truth. <laughs> a safe and place. They're finding great freedom in telling the truth. It hurts. There's a lot of ouches, like, oof. It's a lot of ouches. Like, I've got to recognize my part in it. I got to recognize that I was naive. I got to recognize I didn't know. I got to recognize I, I was a bad picker. I didn't know how to pick friends. I didn't know how to pick the right husband, the right male friend. I didn't know how to pick. And so this is what I'm hearing is a lot of regrets. I'm hearing 
but I'm hearing that they have the regrets, but they want the tools to grow. They want the tools to be better. You know, we're, we're slinging all these cliches around, live your best life. And a lot of women are like, how do you do that? Because <laughs> they're coming to me saying, Jewel, I, I'm looking at social media and I'm feeling inadequate and I'm feeling like I'm missing something. How do I live my best life? That's mm -hmm. kind of like the bottom line question. How do I do this thing called life? How do I stay in a marriage? I've been in my marriage 53 years this year. Uh, women are coming to me and saying, Jewel, how do I keep showing up to a job I don't like? Mm -hmm. Jewel, how do I get over my anger? How do I get over being hurt by people, by men? And this is not a put down for men because we've, we've been hurt by women too. Sure. But because women um, want to be in a relationship, they want companionship, they want to be good parents. They're as I, I am a parent and I'm a grandmother. So on many different levels, I relate to so many women. I'm an entrepreneur. I had many jobs where I was unhappy and I had a strategy to get out of that J-O-B to get to a J-O-Y. So I have women coming to me just wanting to live their best life. Just how do I do that, Jewel? Because I'm feeling the weight of the baggage I've been carrying, the resentment, the exhaustion. I'm also dealing with a lot of women that are coming to me that are caregivers. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're exhausted. They're burned out. They're resentful. Like, I didn't sign up for this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to honor my parents, but I'm tired. Yeah. Uh, I have women that are coming to me and saying, Jewel, I retired, but I didn't know my retirement was going to look like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So th there's a gamut of issues, but I would say mostly women are seeking out my coaching or they're seeking out my counseling because they want to know how to move to the next level. They want to know how to unburden themselves and stop paying the price of having so much emotional baggage. Wow. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. And it yeah. raises a couple more questions in my head. I think it's fabulous that more of us want to not let it be a cliche, live our best lives, yeah. but actually be involved in our lives. Mm -hmm. After COVID, we lost so many people who said, I'll do it tomorrow, and right. then tomorrow never came. So I think that is just fabulous that they are seeking you out. But the first thing that came to my mind was that you have paid your dues. You have paved the road for others. And because you're not selling shampoo by night and <laughs> cars by day, yes. people know that you are steadfast and that they can come to you and you will hear them. You will see them. They, you have created a safe place and you give them permission to tell their truth yeah. as bad as it may be, Ooh. as painful as it can be. They are at a place where finally I can, I can lay this burden down and now I can look forward to the other side. I just wanted to applaud you for that because there aren't many people in this world. I don't know of many people who have prepared themselves to take on the kind of work that you've taken on and actually helped thousands of women get to the other side. That is an anointing that is unheard of. I just had to say that. Oh, it's Marvin, thank remarkable. you. And even if I don't help them get to the other side, as long as they're making progress, as long as they're seeking help, because you know, when you look at the word through, I'm trying to get through the divorce, trying to get through the cancer, trying to get through the pandemic, trying to get through losing a parent. Inside that word through is rough. Yeah. So I don't I don't sell wolf tickets. I don't I don't tell people it's gonna be easy. I don't tell people that all you gotta do is you know buy my anointed cloth and turn around three times and say this scripture and everything's gonna be fine. No, it is a process, boo. It is a process. Mm -hmm. And I I don't I want to operate with integrity with the anointing the Lord has given me. And that means I have to be tell the truth. It's pain. Life is full of pain and joy. This is why my, my anthem is <laughs> Frankie Beverly and Mays. Life is sunshine and rain, joy and pain. That's it. Yeah. That sums it all up. It's joy and pain. It's sunshine and rain. And if you don't know how to deal from season to season, you're not going to be here long. 
you're going to end up on a lot of medication. You're going to end up lonely. You're going to end up frustrated. You're going to end up hurting people because you don't understand mm. that this is this, this is the terms, joy and pain. And I, I understand keenly that we were not given a handbook as a parent. I made my I made some choices I wish I had done differently in my parenting. There's some things I wish I had done differently in my marriage. There's some things I wish I had done differently in my ministry. There's no handbooks. But in making yourself open and being curious and being teachable and having integrity, these are the keys that open up the doors. Are you asking the right questions? Mm -hmm. Are you surrounded with the right people? Are you willing to do the work? Are you willing to... Uh, um, make a mistake sometimes. Yes. A mistake, a misstep. That's how you grow. You learn from the pain. You learn from those past choices. Mm -hmm. And so as a coach and as a counselor, I'm helping people to change their success language. Not that you're a victim, you're a student. You didn't lose, you learned. You're not broke, your money's circulating. You're not mm -hmm. sick, your body is healing. So in changing your language, you change the outcome. You change how the body, the biology is responding to the environment. You cannot ignore the biology. You cannot ignore the psychology. You cannot ignore what you're saying. All of these things work together. And this is, this is my platform, is teaching from a holistic point of view, Margot. Mm -hmm. I, I can't just do one dimension. It's, it's holistic. It's all people, of us. It's all of you. You you can't just people their back is hurting, their head is hurting, the high blood pressure. You know why? Because they're not dealing with something that's going on in their life, yeah. in their relationships, in their marriage, in their children, in the environment, in the racism, in the the economics, in the job that you go to, in, in the the trauma that you haven't dealt with. It's affecting you. So I cannot separate physical health. I, a part of what I teach is e wellness. Now I'm not the I don't eat the healthiest. I'm not the most ideal, but honey, I eat so much better. I've made so many different choices and I love sharing with my audiences wellness techniques. I have an event coming up very soon where I'm having an amazing um, nutritionist uh, come and speak to the ladies so that we can, we're living longer, Margo, but we're not having the quality. But you're out to make sure we have quality. Quality. Holistically. Yeah. Holistic. Yeah quality yeah Dr. And so, as you, so as you said who, what what is the common denominator is that women want more quality they want more quality mm -hmm. and may i ask the quality that you give it's one on one but when i look at you and i research the body of work you are all about relationships and so many of us we want to be in a silo but you introduce holistically let's get the let's do this as on a relationship basis yeah. let's do this as a whole so you have women on the grow as a vital part of consulting of uh, consultations of of coaching and and let's just fellowship let's yeah. fellowship and let's walk through life this holistic journey together am i hearing you correctly Margaret, I'm so glad you brought that up because what I'm finding with the women in our tribe, women are saying, you know what? I've been so, such an introvert. I've been so isolated. I've been so independent. I don't trust people anymore. I don't want to be around women. Um, I, they've been hurt. Mm -hmm. And so what women are experiencing in the women on the grow that we offer is that they're they're cultivating new relationships. They're networking. We're sending cards to people that are going through crisis. They're showing up where they before they would not show up. They're making new friends. Their their ideas are being stimulated. They're like, oh, maybe I should travel. Wait a minute. Oh, maybe I could try this. I try to have different venues, different locations, so that women that are used to just being in the same environment, they're getting out. They're getting out of their comfort zone in more than one way. The environment, the way they're thinking, the way they're eating, the way they're praying, the way they're socializing, getting out of a comfort zone. At our last retreat that I do retreat every year in Malibu, we had sisters come from New York, Atlanta, North Carolina, Las Vegas, uh, Indianapolis. 
So women uh, that are following me on Instagram or Facebook, or they subscribe to my newsletter, or they call my 24 hour inspiration line, they're getting prompted, they're getting encouraged, they're getting pushed, they're getting stimulated and motivated and inspired to get out of their comfort zone, the way they used to think, the way they used to live, the way they used to talk, the way they used to eat, the way they used to spend, you know? So there are many different boxes that we get in. Yes, I love it. I, that <laughs> woman on the growth, that is a powerful, powerful thing. And it kept circulating in my uh-huh. mind. Uh-huh. The other question that I have, because you are an ordained minister, you have women on the grow, you are about counseling and coaching, and referring back to a conversation we had about the counseling, what say you to us church ladies, our mental health and our wholeness as far as counseling? Mm -hmm. It seems to me you are giving us permission to say, you know what? I love the Lord. I go to church every Sunday. I'm in Bible study, but I'm struggling real hard with this and I need some coaching. So Mm -hmm. I think somebody needs to hear that uh, Dr. Jewel Diamond Taylor gives you permission to seek that coaching, to (laughs) seek that that counseling. Yeah, my past church experiences uh, didn't really welcome a Jewel Diamond Taylor because I wanted to get to the women. I wanted to talk about the the taboos. I wanted to talk about their pain because they were coming to church and praising the Lord, but then they were going home to a hot mess. Yeah. And, and, and so it's like, I feel like that was the garden that God gave me, that that is where I'm supposed to nurture women and to help them understand this is t- not taking away from your Bible studies. This is not taking away from your walk with the Lord, but your faith can waver if you have not built up self-esteem and self-worth, if you haven't built up courage, if you haven't found your voice, if you realize that you're asking God to do all the heavy lifting and you're not doing anything, then to me, there's there's something that we need to look at that very carefully. And so uh, as women of color, I know introducing the idea of seeking support and help is a new idea. I understand that. I understand maybe your mother or grandmother said, child, what you going to her for? You tell them out your business. I can understand that. But I'm hoping that they're being, um, they're getting more curious and understanding that this is not about shaming. This is about freedom, liberation. It's about healing. Healing is not just for the body. Healing is not getting rid of demons. Healing is not just about uh, getting your eyesight healing is about feeling good in the body that the Lord gave you. It's about healing the trauma. It's about healing the low self worth. That's why I'm called the self esteem doctor because so many people don't believe that God is on their side. Don't believe that they're worthy of having love again, worthy of having a home again, worthy of getting that degree, worthy of having respect. And this is the voice that I lend. Um, to our spiritual community is that teach the whole person, teach the whole person, help them to understand this mind that God has given us, that are we using it? Do we understand the subconscious and the conscious? Do we understand mindset? Do we understand that when the word of God says that you, that you, that life is in the life and death is in the tongue. What do, do people really understand what that means? Or do, are you just quoting a scripture? So I like breaking it down. I like women to understand what does it mean that iron sharpens iron? Do you really understand what that is? That the people that are sharpening you are already sharp and they've already done the work and yes. iron can only sharpen iron. So if there's somebody dull around you, a butter knife cannot sharpen me. If you are butter knife <laughs> and you ain't been through nothing, you haven't studied, you haven't done the work, you are, but you can't help me. I need to be around other people like you, Marco, who are sharpening their acts, who are working on themselves. Yes. Because then you can help me. Yes. And that's what Women on the Grow is all about. We're a bunch of sharp, sharp sisters, honey. And we open it to any woman who wants to grow. We don't keep track. We don't keep score. We know that women have busy lives, but we offer so much for women to get sharper, to get healed, to get clarity, to get joy back in their lives, to to embrace who they are, all of who you are, your color, your dress size, your hair, everything. Come on. 
uh, that baby daddy and all that. Come on, somebody. That mama that didn't like you, that alcoholism in the family. Yeah, it was there. But you don't have to repeat that. You can break these cycles. Yes. You can, and, and all it really is is a pattern. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have high blood pressure. You just eat in the same way mama and them ate. But you can change the way you're eating. So it, it, it's, it's a lot of heavy lifting that I do, but I'm so grateful to my sister Joy, who has been with me since day one. I am so grateful for my goddaughter Toy. I'm so grateful for the women on the grow that are my sister sowers, my prayer warriors, the women who have such compassion that we send cards and we send money to women dealing with cancer and depression, single parenting. We recently had a sister in our tribe who had a fire in her home and then she had to move to a hotel and then she moved to the hotel and her room was flooded out and we're able to give her support. We're able to reach out to women that in our tribe are going through cancer. So not only are we reaching out to women in our own tribe, but women across the nation. Once we are aware of a legitimate situation where a woman is in distress, uh, we're sending money, we're sending help. We're saying, you, don't, you need some counseling with Jewel? No problem. Don't worry about it. It's covered. Come on, somebody. That so, It's about giving. It's about it, attracting uh, women of quality. I've attracted women of quality, like you, Margo. Women who are on fire. You know, what's that song? Uh, she's saying, this girl is on fire. Oh, Alicia you Keys. Yes. You know, and that's the kind of women I like being around. They're on fire for the Lord. They're on fire for themselves, for their family, for their community. They're on fire. So life attracts like. Mm -hmm. And we are we proudly call ourselves a tribe because we understand the power of oh wow you know when we were doing a podcast things happen and a storm yeah. came through here while we were speaking and dr jewel froze up and i couldn't get her back i but... tell you this girl is on fire <laughs> And that is true. That is so true. So before the wind and the rain tries to shut us down again, Dr. Jewel, will you just kind of close out the, the conversation that we had between the common denominator that you brought, so brought to us, the reason why you are such a magnet for women, for coaching and for the uh, coaching and for the uh, counseling? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, I just want to invite our listeners and those that are watching to open your mind up to the concept that it's good, it's healthy, it's wise, it's safe, it's yeah. critical to your total well-being, and I am available to serve, and I just invite you to check me out on the various platforms that I'm available on social media, and I'm here to serve you and share my pearls of wisdom. Thank you so much, Margo. Oh my goodness, the pearls of wisdom have been great. Can I just add one thing? Dr. Jewel Diamond Taylor has dedicated her time to present episodes to each and every one of us. When you see her over on Facebook, be sure to leave a comment, okay? To let her understand how deeply these episodes are affecting you, how they're changing your life. Uh, are you ready, set, go to become a woman on the grow? Yes. Uh, feedback is what everybody wants. And I'm, I'm asking you to please give that to Dr. Jewel Diamond Taylor because uh, she, in, in one word, in one sentence, in one question, she's able to change lives. So will you do that for me? Yeah, so please that you share. Hit that share button. Leave some mm -hmm. comments. Let me know how you feel and let me know you're connected. Thank you so much for reminding us that of that, Margo. <laughs> no worries, no worries. Until next time, Pearls of Wisdom with Dr. Jewel Diamond Taylor. We'll be back. See you again. Take care. Stay in the light.